When a body dies, it decomposes under normal circumstances. But the scorching deserts of Egypt aren't exactly normal. When this body was buried 5,000 years ago, the hot Egyptian sand acted like a sponge, absorbing all the fluids from it. Bacteria that eat away at dead bodies need water to survive. Starved of water, the bacteria died and the body was preserved. Once the ancient Egyptians realized this, it led to a ritual that has made their culture immortal. We know from their hieroglyphic records that the Egyptians believed in an afterlife, but there was one catch. A person's body had to be a well-preserved place for its spirit to reside. This 3,000-year-old mummy of King Ramses II shows how the Egyptians perfected the art of mummification, carefully preparing a person's body so that it wouldn't decompose. But how did they do it? A Greek historian named Herodotus traveled to Egypt in 450 BC and gave Westerners the first written account of mummification. They take first a crooked piece of iron and with it draw out the brain through the nostrils. Next, they make a cut along the flank with a sharp Ethiopian stone and take out the whole contents of the abdomen. And then the body is covered for 70 days in a local salt called natron. The body is wrapped around from head to foot in bandages of fine linen cloth, smeared over with gum, which is used generally by the Egyptians in the place of glue. It is then closed in a wooden case which has been made especially for the purpose and shaped into the figure of a man. Several years ago, a team of scientists decided to put the account of Herodotus to the test. They tried to mummify a modern-day man who had donated his body to science. No shortcuts were allowed. The scientists used reproductions of the tools that ancient Egyptian embalmers would have used. The scientists removed all the internal organs except the heart and then covered the body with natron from Egypt to absorb the fluid. Then they wrapped the dried body in linen and coated it with sticky tree resin which contains germ-killing chemicals and seals the wrapping. Six years later, the team checked up on their mummy. An x-ray found no significant sign of decay. It looks like Herodotus, called the father of history, has given us valuable insight into an ancient science. Just looking at it, the elaborate burial practices of the Egyptians were admired by the Romans, who conquered Egypt in 30 BC and adopted many of their customs. This coffin is from the 2nd century AD, after the Romans had conquered Egypt. Inside was something remarkable. Not one mummy, but two. Two children, in fact. One wrapped, the other unwrapped. Their parents must have been rich. This was a period when the art of mummification was in decline, yet the quality of these two mummies is very high. Each mummy lies on a portrait of Newt, the sky goddess. Similar portraits of Newt are also found on lots of coffins in Thebes, one of ancient Egypt's capital cities. First of all, when Bill Manley decoded some of the hieroglyphs, he discovered that the mummies were boys, apparently from the same family, a Roman governor of Thebes during the reign of the emperor Hadrian. X-rays and dental evidence revealed even more.
This family were dealing with a situation where the, 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 the wife had died. The father had remarried. Another child had been born, and yet within the space of a few months after the, um, the, the death of the, the first wife, both of the children, the first wife's child and the second wife's child, had been taken away at the same time. Scientists can only guess at why they died. Whatever killed them, these young half-brothers were among the last bodies ever mummified in Egypt. That's because in AD 200, something new was sweeping through Egypt and the Roman Empire. A new religion, Christianity, had different ideas about life after death. Christianity made a strong distinction between the body and the soul. The body, it said, was just the soul's temporary housing and should be allowed to decay naturally while the soul went on to the afterlife alone. Mummies became relics of another culture, largely forgotten, until archaeologists discovered how much they could learn from these preserved pieces of the past. <laughs>